Welcome. I'm Greg here from the Backroom Podcast. We're here at the floor at Emerald City Comic Con. Uh, as you can see, we are uh, bothering a very busy artist. Uh, we're here with Mike Allred of Madman, uh, Ecstatic Sex Force, uh, The Golden Sex Plates. Force? Sex I never, Force. I never did Sex Force. <laughs> That's somebody else's book. Oh, I, I've said too much. Uh, it's time for us to leave. No. Uh, and just uh, all around uh, indie comic Superstar, really. Thank you. Well, I, I mean, it's true. <laughs> um, so, you know, here you are, at Emerald City Comic Con. This is this is very close to home base for you. It is now. Yeah, it is. Well, yeah, you just recently moved to Portland. Downtown Portland. Yeah. Okay. So, how does how how do you think that's going to change the world and your art from being the the All Red Fortress as it was? <laughs> um, <laughs> I, I kind of, it's almost like a new burst of air. It's uh, feeling reinvigorated and um, inspirationally, spiritually, physically. I got a chiropractor who's helping me with my back and hand problems. So, um, yeah. So I, I, I really feel like there's a whole new burst coming on and, and and it comes at a time when I'm uh, four issues uh, into a new series that'll launch in May. Uh, Is that iZombie? iZombie, yeah, with Chris Roberson and yeah. Laura's coloring it. So, yeah, Mike's just a really good amazing. time. It's some of the most beautiful stuff he's, he's done. It's gorgeous. Well, and I've seen that they have the first seven pages of the first issue up on for preview online, so people can check it out. It looks gorgeous. Thank you, Ken. So you've got that, and then Madman's drawing, or the current volume of Madman's drawing to a close. Um, yeah. Yeah, and we're planning a special for next year. Um, yeah, I'll do the main story and some... Uh, uh, really exciting new artists uh, doing backups and may, uh, maybe get some old faves. I always try to get my buddy Darwin Cook to do stuff with me. Uh, and yeah, it, so I mean, Madman is is where our heart is. Uh, but I've got I, I'm also compelled to do uh, collaborations every once in a while. That gets the juice going and. Um, that's what iZombie is for me now. So I'm feeling that same collaborative burst that I got from, you know, X Force and, uh, with Pete Milligan, and it, it just feels great. It, it's a real dream project. Wonderful. Well, this is Michael. Yeah. Hey, Michael. That's okay. No, no, that's okay. Um, well, so I, one of the questions I have for you, I've always been a huge fan, and Madman is, as much as it's an action-adventure comic, it is a, like, a spiritual quest. And so Frank is just constantly rediscovering reality and what it means to him and who he is. And I've always wondered how much of that is a reflection of, of your own experience. Um, well, you, you know how you hear, write what you know. And so when I was uh, reanimated after my first death, I, I uh, thought, you know, I should write about this and turn to drawing the story. But uh, it, it, seriously, a lot of um, my feelings and I, it, it, I, I enjoy hanging on to that enthusiasm that you have as a child, and that is a large part of uh, who Frank Einstein is, um, just finding awe in everything. I mean, just the fact that we exist, that we're beings that can communicate with each other, that we're on this strange circular thing, and in the middle of what, you know? It's just thinking about everything, and Frank Einstein is a perfect vehicle to talk about these existential things, but at the same time, he's a vehicle for any kind of adventure you can think of, right. and um, I'm just very grateful that whatever came together allowed me to come up with a character like that and to do that series. I tried getting it's wonderful. So, in the spirit of that, will we ever see a Mago? Uh, I'm sorry, a Lego Madman game? I'd in the love that. Of child yeah, fun. And we just moved into I would love that. Well, so uh, also one of the things that we try to ask a lot of our guests is kind of what's your first comic memory, or your your first kind of comic book experience that you remember as a child. Um, we 
lived on a hill in Roseburg, Oregon, and we could walk just a few blocks down Lane Street to Jackson Street, which like was the main street. Still looks a lot like it did when I was a kid. And um, there was a big drugstore there that, that you would walk in, and you'd be able it, there were, to where there were stairs. So you'd walk in and look down over the whole store. You could go down the stairs, and there was they sold pop. So there was cash registers there, and there was also a big parking lot on the other side. A lot of cash registers there, but the bottom of the stairs when you came in from Jackson Street, they had the, the old popcorn machine. So it always smelled like popcorn. And then on the far side were all the magazine racks, and that's where the comic books were. And my first memory of a comic book was uh, uh, early issue of the first run of X-Men, and it had Spider-Man hanging uh, upside down on the cover. That's the first cover I can clearly remember. But they were always around. Um, uh, one one year, my one year when we were kids, my older brother got me up on the card table and said, "Dance, boy, dance!" and started shaking the table. I fell, landed on my head, woke up in the hospital, but I was surrounded by comic books. That's that's what my childhood was, a lot of brutal violence in comic books. And um, they were always there. And my dad, uh, a psychologist, w also wanted to be an artist. Nice to meet you guys. Take care. And so he always made sure that we had art supplies, drawing paper, crayons, watercolors, and he had a drawing table which I inherited. And so yeah, we were encouraged to draw. So I, I honestly can't remember a time when there wasn't some kind of pop culture thing. There were peanuts, toys. I, my earliest earliest memory was seeing a cartoon version of the Tin Man on television. Um, yeah, it was just always rich with art and music and movies. First movie I have a memory of was A Hard Day's Night on television, and that's remained my favorite movie ever since. I just, it, it, I can, it's, it's, it's the greatest cure for depression I could ever advise to anybody. A Hard Day's Night is pure joy. Love that. Movie. Well, and, and and that really brings us to another heavy influence in your work is is really music. I, I mean, Red Rocket Seven was was nothing if not the history of music through through your artistic style. That that seemed to be kind of like a dream project for you. Absolutely. It, 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 as far as pop culture goes, it's, it really is, is about comics, music, and movies. And Red Rock, the Red Rocket 7 project was my opportunity to do all of that. My band did an album, um, which uh, stands alone as an album, but also acts as a soundtrack for Red Rocket 7. And we also did a movie which integrates uh, into the story as well called Astro West. And uh, nice meeting you. Take care, Captain Marvel. Astro Esque is an extra on the G-Men from Hell DVD. Yeah, although that's the they, they use the wrong master. The sound is horrible. It's not letterbox, but anyway, yeah. uh, you can get some idea of what should have been. So as we sit here and watch Michael Allred do his thing with his various fans, uh, one of the one of the next questions I wanted to ask you is, is Golden Plates. Um, where I know we're waiting on Volume Four, correct? Uh, if we are, we're waiting a very long time. Okay. Um, it, I, I need to have a lot of time and a lot of money because uh, I burned through the time and money I had on the first three volumes. It's something I very, very much want to complete, but realistically, um, unless somebody very wealthy drops a big load of cash on me, it's just not practical right now. So um, we're trying to figure out how we'll be able to schedule that and, and make it work. Um, it, we, we were in a really unusual place when we were able to do the first and um, it, yeah, it just, she woke me up. I was getting into the breakdowns for number volume four and um, she said we can't pay next month's bills so I had to get back to a paying gig. Yeah. That's, that's the reality of that. Well, so anybody who's interested in sponsoring the Golden Plates, feel free, contact us, let us know, we'll put you in touch. Right on. <laughs>